In this video, we'll talk about solving linear systems by linear combinations. An important thing to notice about this method is that it actually goes by many different names, and depending on the book you use or the teacher you have, they probably have a way that they prefer to talk about it. So the book that my class uses right now calls it linear combinations. So that's one of the names for it. But back in my day, whenever I learned this originally, uh, we called this a different method, which is elimination. We called it by a different word. It's the same method, elimination. And I've also worked with a book that used a different way of saying it, which is the addition method. All three of these names make sense once you realize what the method is. In this method, our goal is to add our two equations together in our system in such a way that one of our variables will be eliminated. So that's where the name elimination comes from. We're adding the equations together. That's where the name addition comes from. And another way of thinking of this addition is that we are combining our, our equations. So that's where the phrase linear combinations comes from. Whichever way you want to think of it um, is fine. Your teacher probably is going to use a certain way of referring to it. So that's the way that you need to remember it as for now. But it is also helpful just to any of those three if you can remember that they mean the same thing. That's helpful. So on example one, um, what's going to happen, I'm going to have four examples. Each of them kind of adds a step or a complexity to the problem. So for example one, when I look at this, if I know just that my method is to add the two equations together and I look at it, whenever I go to add these two equations together, I would add like terms. So I would say 3x minus 3x. And what's great about that is that 3x minus 3x is 0x, so these cancel each other out. So by adding these equations together, right off the bat, we eliminated our x's. The rest does not get eliminated. Negative 4y plus a negative y is a negative 5y. And negative 13 plus negative 7 is negative 20. What we're going to do is divide by negative 5 to finish solving for y. And we're going to find that we can at least get the first answer on these usually pretty quickly, quicker than we did for substitution, for the substitution method, I mean. So once we know what y equals, we're going to plug that back into either of the top two equations. It doesn't matter which one. And most of the time, there's not even one that's easier than the other. You just have to pick one or the other. If you don't like making choices, then just always pick the first one. 3x minus 4 times 4 equals negative 13. So I need to do 4 times 4 and then solve this for x by adding 16. Which means 3x equals 3 and then dividing by 3. So x ends up being 1, y was 4, and so together that makes the point x 1 comma 4. That's as easy as it can be. Sometimes they'll have it set up to where as soon as you add them, the variable will cancel out, but not all the time. So let's look at some cases where they don't immediately eliminate and figure out what to do. On example 2, if I look at my x's, 2x plus negative 8x, when you add them together, they do not go away. So I cannot right now add these together and eliminate x. Negative 2y plus negative 2y is not 0y. We would add those together and get negative 4y. So right now, we cannot eliminate a variable. So we have to think about what we're allowed to do to this. What ways are we allowed to manipulate the situation? So what we're allowed to do in this method and in general with equations is we're allowed to multiply everything by the same number and it will still be the same equation. So what that means for us is if I look at my y's and I notice they're both negative twos, if I wanna add them and be able to have them cancel each other out, one of those needs to be a positive two y. To get a positive two y when you have a negative two y, you'd multiply by negative one. 
So we need to decide either to multiply the first equation by negative 1 or the second equation by negative 1. It doesn't matter which one you pick in this case. I'm going to pick the first one. And the only reason that I am picking the first one is because I know that that will allow me to write it underneath and it will make my work um, easier to follow. You could multiply whichever one you wanted to by a negative one. When I do this, though, I have to basically distribute that negative one throughout the whole equation so that it turns it into a negative 2x, a positive 2y, and a negative 28. Negative 8x plus negative 2x is negative 10x. Negative 22 plus negative 28 is negative 50. What I want to do now is divide by negative 10. So that x equals 5. So even though we had to do a little bit more work, it still didn't take us a ton of effort to get to our first part of our answer, x equals 5. Now I'm going to go back and plug this in for x. And there are three different places that I could do that. I could do that um, in the first equation they gave me, the second equation they gave me, or in the equation that I came up with in order to solve the problem. Again, it doesn't matter which one we pick. These are all equally easy. I'm just going to pick the first one. And usually that's what I do, is I take the decision away from myself and just say, I'm going to pick the first one. The only time where I actually really, really think about it is if one of the equations has much bigger numbers than the other, then I try to avoid that because bigger numbers make your mental math a little more challenging. So I'm going to subtract this 10 and get negative 2y equals 18. I'm going to divide by negative 2. So y equals negative 9. So x is 5, y is negative 9. So 5 comma negative 9 is our answer. So that's an example where basically what we wanted to do was, was essentially subtract our equations instead of adding them. So we multiplied one equation by a negative one to make that happen. When we look at example three, we notice an even different, more different situation. Because when I look in front of x, those are not the same numbers, three and one. When I look in front of y, those are not the same numbers. And so what we need to do is actually come up with a number to multiply one of these by or both of these by so that we can get uh, so that we can get something that eliminates. So whenever I look at this, I look at my x's and I say, well, if I have a 3x and an x, I could turn that x into negative 3x really easily by multiplying by negative 3. Okay. There is another way to do this where you eliminate y. It just would be more complicated. And we'll talk about how that would work on the next example. But since I've noticed that I just need to multiply the second equation by negative 3 so that I can get negative 3x, which will cancel, I just have to make sure that I go through the rest of the equation distributing that negative 3. So I'm going to mark out that equation because for now I don't want it to get in the way of what I'm doing because I want to use the top equation and the equation I just came up with. The x's cancel. Negative 5y plus 9y is 4y. 8 plus 0 is 8. I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides and get y equals 2. Now I have three different places that I can go back and plug these in, and it doesn't matter which place I pick. I guess technically the middle equation here, x minus 3y equals 0, that's probably the easiest place to plug in and solve, but it really doesn't matter which one you pick as long as you pick one. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides and get the point. 6 comma 2. Remember that you can check these answers by plugging them back in. If I put a 6 here where x is and a 2 here where y is, 
I get 18 minus 10, which really is 8. And I can do that in the next equation. I can put 6 and 2 and say 6 minus 6 equals 0. That's true. Whatever you're doing that, you only would need to plug it into the two original equations. You don't have to also plug it into any equations that you used later on. You can, and it should still work. You just don't have to. You only have to do it for the first two. Our final example here is this is the most complicated it can get um, unless you had to like rearrange your equations to start or something like that. The reason it's the most complicated situation is because when I look at my x's and my y's, there's not a single thing that I can do that will get me the same number in front. In other words, I can buy something and get four. Technically, I can. It's a fraction, but we want to avoid fractions because they make our math harder to do. So I can't multiply three by a whole number and get four. Can't multiply six by a whole number and get seven. But what we can do is multiply both equations by something so that we can get the same number. The concept that we're going for here is finding the least common multiple. So figuring out what can I get four and three to both equal. There's actually more than one answer in a way because you can think, well, four and three can get to 12, but you also might accidentally skip over 12 and think, oh, well, four and three can get 24. The only reason that 12 is better than 24 is because our numbers will be smaller and easier to work with. So it is preferable to pick the least common multiple, but if you accidentally mess up and pick a higher multiple, it, you won't necessarily get the problem wrong. So in this example, we could choose to eliminate x by trying to get 12s in front, or we could choose to eliminate y's by getting 42 in front. The easier thing to do would be to get 12 because the numbers are smaller, so we will do that. Aside from having to multiply them both by a number, 3 for the first one and 4 for the second one, we also need to multiply one of them by a negative so that they'll have opposite signs. It doesn't matter which one we choose to put the negative with, so I'll just put it with the first one. It really doesn't matter which one you pick. So I have to distribute the negative 3 all the way through. This is an easy place to mess up. We'll forget to multiply all the way through. Negative 3 times 16 is negative 48. Um, that might be something that you have to work out to the side if you don't know it off of your head, and that's totally fine. 4 times negative 3x is negative 12x. 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. And 4 times 17 is 68. And so now that I have 12x and negative 12x, I am ready to add these together so that they will cancel out. 18y minus 28y is negative 10y. Negative 48 plus 68 is 20. I'm going to divide by a negative 10 so that y equals negative 2. So even though we did have to do quite a bit of work there at the beginning to figure out it still goes pretty quickly and gets us to one of our answers without too much trouble. Now I'm going to take that negative 2 for y and plug it back in. I actually have four places that I could plug it in, and it doesn't matter which one I pick. Again, my suggestion to you is to pick something with the smallest number as possible, which would be one of the first two. Um, so I'm just going to plug it into the first one because I like plugging into the first one. You could be rebellious against that idea and always plug into the second one if you wanted to. Um, it really doesn't matter as long as you plug it in one of them and don't forget about oh, plugging it back in. That's also an easy mistake to make is just accidentally not finishing the problem. You find y and are like, yay, I'm done, and then don't remember to find x or vice versa. That would be no good. This is x comma y, so negative 1 comma negative 2, and that is our answer. So for my final slide, I have some steps that you could write out to help you um, that between having examples and having a list of steps, when you go back to do this on your own, you should be well prepared because sometimes just looking at an example, you may forget why we did what we did or what exactly we did or just looking at steps, 
you might say, okay, it says to do this, but I don't actually know what that means. Well, if you've got both of them next to each other, you should hopefully be able to see, okay, I did this on my example. It says this on the steps. So this is what I need to do on the problem I'm trying to work myself. So step one is that we have to choose a variable to eliminate. Sometimes there's an easier, what, some of, sometimes one of them is obvious that we need to eliminate, but technically in any problem, we could eliminate either variable first. On number two, we have to decide whether or not we need to multiply either one or both equations by a number in order to make our elimination happen. So it may be that we need to not multiply at all or multiply by a negative one or multiply by one number or by or both of them by a number. On three, we add the two equations together and finish by solving for the variable that we have left over. Uh, so either x or y will end up knowing step three. And then once we know that first variable, we plug our answer into any of the equations in the problem to solve for the other variable. And that's all there is to it. That is elimination. So just to kind of put um, some perspective on this, at this point, you should have learned all three methods for solving, graphing, substitution, and elimination. Lots of people, um, lots of people, I would say, end up liking elimination the best because it usually takes the least amount of thought. Whether it actually takes the least amount of work or not is different, but um, some equations just don't work out well for graphing. Uh, some equations would be any equation we have, it's about the same difficulty to pick elimination no matter what. That's part of why we learn it last, is because if we didn't, you wouldn't want to do it either of the other methods. Um, so just keep that in mind that however you feel about these three methods is totally okay. You're entitled to your opinion. Um, but you may find as you work through problems and are given a choice of which one to use, you might find yourself gravitating more towards elimination just because it works out to be the same amount of work almost every single time. So that is solving by linear combinations, also known as elimination, also known as the addition method. Thanks. Have fun.